Let's talk about your conscience clause. Uh, this is into aspects of a quality law. This is well beyond, Paul, uh, the Aisha's cake story, isn't it? For example, this could apply to gay people who want to avail of services within a bed and breakfast. You believe that the owner should be able to turn them away. Is that true? That's correct. Um, and part of the issue around uh, the B&B case, which got a lot of headlines around the Bull case, where the Supreme Court ruled that uh, they shouldn't have their conscience uh, upheld that they should have provided that service. The deputy uh, president of the Supreme Court uh, went on to say in a, in a speech that she gave to the Irish Law Society in Dublin recently that I am not sure that our law has yet found a reasonable accommodation uh, and whether we should we would be better off with a more nuanced approach. So Baroness Hale that actually presided in that particular case has highlighted this publicly uh, that uh, she isn't sure that there is a reasonable accommodation for people uh, to have their conscience upheld and that is something that I think we need to debate and explore and have a specific conversation around it um, because companies like uh, Asher's uh, are clearly uh, got a, a Christian ethos and we need to have this discussion in society as to whether or not companies like them should be allowed to provide their service. Um, or, or are we going to say that if you have a particular faith-based ethos so, as an individual and an organisation, you need to close up shop, make people unemployed and lose your livelihood? Now that to me... Or treat people with equality. And they do. Uh, Ashers do not refuse anybody, nor indeed would I support anybody wanting to refuse an individual uh, purely on the okay, basis of well, sexual orientation or indeed their religious belief. Okay, so let me so let me bring this back to the bed and breakfast uh, scenario, the bed and breakfast example. So a gay person walks up to a and b and tries to book a room for the night. Just to be clear, you support that business, a gay couple, you support that business turning them away, do you? No gays allowed? What I support is that uh, B&B being able to carry out its service in a way in which they can observe their religious beliefs. Uh, and if that means it is against their own deeply held views that they cannot be complicit in affirming uh, an activity that they regard as going against their conscience, then I believe a society should make a reasonable accommodation for those people. Uh, to me, that is not unreasonable. So you believe that gay couple should be can be turned away, correct? Well, I... Uh, I think that uh, people who, uh, gay people, if, if they want to use a B&B, &B, um, would use a facility where they would be able to, to use that facility. Uh, are we saying that... But just to be clear, you believe that they can be turned away? Yes, I believe that a B&B &B owner, um, and indeed broaden it out, any organisation, individual, that has deeply held uh, religious beliefs... Um, should be able to live in compliance so, with their conscience. So does your conscience clause extend beyond sexuality? So let's take religion, for example. I don't know. Let's say you had a pastor that didn't trust any Muslim. Could that pastor say, sorry, I own a business, get out, no Muslims allowed? No, uh, and I would be wholly opposed to uh, individuals and organisations that provide goods and services being able to turn people away on the basis of their religious views, their political views, or indeed their sexual orientation. That's not what this is about. Where it, it moves and changes is whenever uh, an organisation is, is asked to do something or to be complicit in something and produce something that they find to be against their conscience. Uh, and where are their rights for those individuals in terms of their conscience being upheld? How would it work, for example, with adoption? How would it work with adoption? Well, you raise a very good point because in England, when gay marriage was introduced, the Catholic Church warned that this would have severe implications for their adoption agencies, and the Catholic Church has had to withdraw from that. So is society saying that same-sex couples uh, should have the right to access adoption from anywhere, uh, but that Catholic couples can't then use the Catholic adoption agencies somewhere? And there's the balance. And I think in a tolerant society, in a liberal society, we need to find the space to accommodate difference. We're not all the same, uh, and we are often encouraged to celebrate difference. But yet here we have a company that is being persecuted by the Equality Commission because of their Christian beliefs. That's intolerant, and that's something that I think we need to be addressing, and I intend to do that through a private member's bill. OK, Paul Kevin, thank you very much.